In this video, we'll put the 30 most popular robot vacuums we've tested in tiers, depending on performance. From best to worst, we'll have six tiers. The best robots are put in the S tier. The worst are put in the E tier. Most robots will fall somewhere in between. We start with the Bissell Spin Wave. The Spin Wave is well optimized for mopping, with rotating mopping pads and a large water tank. But it struggles picking up edge debris and it navigates poorly. This is a D tier robot. The Dream D9 Pro is cheap and fully mapping capable with keepout zones. But despite using LiDAR to navigate, paths quite inefficiently, especially in big open spaces. It also struggled a bit in our short hair pickup test. Overall, we put it in the C tier. The Dream Z10 Pro is cheap for a robot vacuum that self empties and offers small obstacle detection and avoidance. However, it performed quite poorly in our small obstacle detection and avoidance testing. Like the D9 Pro, it also struggled a bit in our short hair pickup test, and it was a below average performer in our mopping test. It's also a C tier robot. The Echovacs N8 Pro is also cheap for a robot vacuum that self empties and features small obstacle detection and avoidance, but it too performed poorly in our small obstacle detection and avoidance testing. It also sometimes pads inefficiently in big open spaces, and it struggles picking up larger debris on hard floors. It too belongs in the C tier. The Echovacs X1 Omni has a feature rich docking station that automatically empties its dustbin and cleans and dries its mopping pads. It's also the only robot we've tested that features a built in voice assistant, which allows you to talk directly to the robot to tell it to clean or return to its dock, for example. It also deep cleans carpet well and it mops well, but it struggles picking up larger debris on hard floors and picking up tufts of shorter hair. It also pads very erratically at times and performed poorly in our small obstacle detection and avoidance testing. Overall, it's only a C tier robot. The Eufy 11S is very cheap and picks up most types of surface level debris just as well as much more expensive robots. It's also small and so it can easily fit in between and underneath many different types of furniture. But as a random pathing robot, it pads inefficiently and it doesn't map. Its brush roll also tangles especially easily with longer hair. It does offer good all around performance for the price though, so we put it in the B tier. The Eufy 11S Max is almost identical to the 11S and performed very similarly to the 11S in all of our performance tests. It's in the same tier as the 11S. The same is true for the 15C Max. It also is almost identical in design and performs very similarly to the 11S in our tests. We put all of these random pathing Eufy's in the B tier. The Eufy G30 again features an almost identical design to the 11S, but adds gyroscope technology and an optical sensor on the bottom of the robot to navigate more efficiently neatly in rows. It still can't map, and because it has the same brush roll as random pathing models, also tangles especially easily with longer hair. Like random pathing Eufy's, it's a good robot for the price though, so we put it in the B tier. The Eufy X8 Hybrid has a similar brush roll design to cheaper Eufy's, and so it too tangles very easily with longer hair. It uses LiDAR to navigate better than random pathing Eufy's like the 11S and gyroscope Eufy's like the G30, but it doesn't path as precisely or efficiently as other top tier LiDAR robot vacuums we've tested. Its movement can also be erratic at times, which hurt its performance in our carpet deep cleaning and mopping tests. All things considered, including its price, this is at best a C tier robot. The iLife A4S Pro is a very cheap random pathing robot. We don't recommend it mostly because it doesn't cover certain areas of the room in our navigation testing. It also struggled pathing around chairs. It's a reasonably good vacuum. It performed well in most of our debris pickup testing, but mostly due to its navigational issues, we can't put it any higher than the D tier. The random pathing iLife V3S Pro uniquely uses a nozzle instead of a brush roll to pick up debris. And so it does very well picking up and pulling longer hair all the way into its dustbin. It also picks up debris well on hard floors. But on carpet, it struggles because of its nozzle design. The rough texture of the carpet prevents its side brushes from effectively pulling debris into the path of its nozzle. The narrow width of the nozzle also keeps the robot from deep cleaning carpet effectively. The robot also struggled with uneven and at times incomplete coverage in our navigation testing. Like the A4S Pro, we put the V3S Pro in the D tier. 
The iRobot Roomba 694 is a good all-around performer with good pickup and good navigation for a random padding robot. It also doesn't tangle with longer hair as easily as its biggest competitors, random padding Yuffies. On the negative side of things, it is larger in size, and so it doesn't fit underneath or in between furniture as well as Yuffies. And it struggles a bit picking up tufts of shorter hair while Yuffies do not. Overall, we place it in the same tier as random padding Yuffies, in the B tier. The iRobot Roomba i3 also picks up longer hair very well, and it navigates well for a gyroscope robot vacuum. It's also compatible with a self-empty docking station, but it struggles picking up shorter tufts of hair and edge debris, and it's expensive for a robot that is not fully mapping capable with keepout zones. So we put it in the C tier. The iRobot Roomba i7 has a very similar body and brush rolls compared to the i3, and so it too picks up longer hair well, but struggles picking up shorter tufts of hair. It does use a camera to navigate, which allows it to path closer to edges for better edge cleaning. It's also fully mapping capable with keepout zones. But it doesn't navigate nearly as well as similarly priced top rated LiDAR robots we recommend. It also only has one suction setting, and so it can't be set to a lower setting to minimize noise output or be set to a higher setting to maximize deep cleaning. Overall, we put the i7 in the B tier. The Roomba J7 has all of the same pros and cons as the i7, but has slightly better battery life and adds small obstacle detection and avoidance. This feature makes a huge difference and it works very well on the J7. It's enough to bump the J7 up to the A tier. The Roomba Combo J7 is almost identical to the J7, but adds mopping functionality and has a larger battery. It's much more expensive though, to the point where it's really not a good value. This knocks it down to the B tier. The Roomba S9 has wider brush rolls that extend almost along the full width of the front of the vacuum. This allows it to clean corners very well and gives it a wider cleaning path, so it cleans more quickly and efficiently. The actual material and design of its brush rolls is similar to that of the i7 and J7, so the S9 also doesn't tangle as easily with longer hair. Like the i7 and J7, the S9 is also compatible with a self-empty dock. On the negative side of things, the S9 struggled quite a bit in our navigation testing. It bumped into more obstacles more times and with more force than most other mapping robot vacuums we tested, and it didn't always get complete coverage in our tests. It also has low runtime, and it's very expensive for a camera robot vacuum. The S9 is not a great robot, but it's a good enough vacuum to earn a spot in the B tier. The Nido D7 deep cleans carpet very well for a robot vacuum, and it has a large dustbin. Similar to the Roomba S9, it has an extra wide brush roll that extends almost along the full width of the front of the vacuum, which gives it a wide cleaning path so that it's able to clean very quickly and efficiently. However, unlike the S9, it doesn't clean corners very well, and also doesn't pick up edge debris very well. The robot also threw errors repeatedly during testing. Because of this last negative especially, it falls all the way down into the D tier. The Nido D8 is very similar in design and performance to the D7, and it too threw errors repeatedly during testing, to the point where we couldn't even complete certain pickup tests. This robot is also in the D tier. The Roborock E4 picks up most types of debris just as well as the best robot vacuums we've tested. It also mops well. The main downside to this robot is its navigation. Like the Eufy G30 and iRobot Roomba i3, it uses gyroscope technology and an optical sensor on the bottom of the robot to navigate. This allows it to clean neatly in rows, but it doesn't allow for full-fledged mapping ability with keepout zones. At its price, this is an excellent value option though, so we put it in the A tier. The E5 is almost identical to the E4, with slightly more measured airflow and suction, and slightly better carpet deep cleaning. Like the E4, its biggest negative is the fact that it can't map, and therefore doesn't offer keepout zones. It's also usually more expensive than the E4. Still, it also earns a spot in the A tier. The Roborock Q5 is a terrific all-around performer. It uniquely offers above-average pickup ability and above-average navigation at an affordable price point. It also self-empties. It's the best mid-range robot vacuum we've tested, and so we place it in the S tier. The Roborock Q7 is almost identical to the Q5, but adds mopping functionality. 
It does have a small reservoir though, and you can't use the Roborock app to control how much water drips onto its mopping pad. You have to use a physical switch to set flow rate. Because it's more expensive with only limited mopping functionality, we put it in a tier below the Q5 in the A tier. The Roborock Q7 Max is also very similar to the Q5 and also adds mopping functionality, but its reservoir is large and it offers app control of water flow rate. This makes it the best mid-range robot vacuum we've tested that can also mop. Like the Q5, it's in the S tier. The Roborock S7 has a more advanced mop attachment that vibrates and is able to rise slightly off the ground. Otherwise, it mops similarly to Q-series robots. It's a good vacuum, though it doesn't deep clean carpet very well on default power. It's an excellent robot though, with excellent navigation. Overall, we put it in the A tier. The Roborock S7 Max-V deep cleans carpet much better than the S7 on default power. It also adds small obstacle detection and avoidance that works very well according to our testing. It's also currently the only Roborock robot that's compatible with the Roborock Ultra Dock, which automatically empties the robot's dustbin, cleans its mopping pad, and refills its water reservoir. This is the best premium robot vacuum we've tested so far, and so we place it in the S tier. The Shark IQ is compatible with a bagless self-empty dock, and is usually very competitively priced. But it struggled picking up edge debris and had trouble navigating around certain more complex obstacles like chair legs in our navigation testing. Despite being a mapping robot with a camera, it also couldn't generate even one map during testing. This last negative especially drops it all the way down into the E tier. The Shark AI was able to generate maps during testing without issue, and its mapping features work very well. Like the Shark IQ, the Shark AI robot is also compatible with a bagless self-empty dock, and is also very competitively priced. But it too struggles heavily picking up edge debris, and despite using LiDAR to navigate, still navigates relatively imprecisely and inefficiently compared to top-rated LiDAR robots we've tested. Overall, this is a C-tier robot. The WISE robot, like the Roborock Q5, is an excellent vacuum and an excellent robot. It picked up most types of debris very well in our pickup testing, and it paths very precisely and efficiently in our navigation testing. Unlike the Q5, it's not compatible with an auto-empty docking station. It also has below average battery life and above average noise output for a robot vacuum. Still, it earns a spot in the A tier as the best budget price robot vacuum we've tested. And that just about wraps up this video ranking the 30 most popular robot vacuums we've tested so far. See the description of this video for the latest updated list of all of the robot vacuums we recommend and thank you for watching.